how are you? This is yours truly, Triple G, coming at you live. Today is December 8th, year is 2016. Going forward, I will specify what day I'm cutting each video so that um, people don't get confused. Um, you know, for instance, you know, over the years, you know, guitar companies sometimes make changes to their um, guitar models, like the specs or pickups or whatnot, and, you know, even if it's a video is made six years ago, somebody watching it today, you know, sometimes leave a comment saying, hey, you have it wrong, they don't make it like that. Well, yes, no shit, I, I realize this. But, you know, six years ago, when the guitar was made, which is the one I buy, you know, came with different specs. So, uh, hence, I'm, I will start now uh, declaring which date I'm making each video on. So today, I am coming at you with, um, well again, it's not a new guitar, it's a new video, but it's not a new guitar. Uh, I've, had, I've had it for maybe slightly less than a year. So this is an Ibanez Destroyer, so uh, even though there were, uh, I did a little photo roll, I will uh, show you what the guitar looks like. There's your Ibanez headstock with destroyer marking nothing fancy going on here tone zone Air Norton tone volume knobs flame maple this model is called the Ibanez destroyer FM 520 FM specifying flame maple I'm sure this is veneer you have some uh, basic binding Just a mahogany back. So there you go. So that's what the guitar looks like. So um, this guitar is made in China. Okay, so um, you know, obviously a lot of people scoff at uh, guitars that are made in China, Indonesia, you know, what have I did have some good luck with uh, Chi um, Chinese-made guitars, like the... Um, uh, Ernie Ball, Sterling, um, JP50, which was made in China. Um, it got tuned in Orange, where uh, Music Man is located, and you know that was a phenomenally put together guitar. This is also a reasonably well put together guitar, in my opinion. Um, you know, there's a clear difference between China-made guitars that are backed by big name producers versus just China guitars that are just Chinese made. Um, you know, the even though this is made in a, some sort of an OEM situation, some factory that Ivan has hired to produce this guitar, you know, the quality assurance and quality control definitely still go into these guitars where, you know, Ibanez does not mind slapping their logo on it, correct? So, um, with that said, you know, you know, I don't discriminate just because of its origin or not, and that is a well-known uh, fact that I've shared with you many times before. And um, those of you who watch my videos often enough will know that I am absolutely, absolutely a whore when it comes to an Explorer guitar, right? So, um, you know, it's not hard to figure out where Ibanez drew the inspiration that went into the look of this guitar. So back in the um, day, long, long, many, many years ago, Ibanez started to produce guitars um, that was just a dead knockoff of a uh, Gibson Explorer. Of course, eventually they ended up getting sued, and out of a legal lawsuit situation, um, they had to redesign uh, the line. So um, when they after the lawsuit, they now before the lawsuit, the Ibanez uh, Destroyer model was used by none other than like one of the famous ones, none other than Van Halen himself. But uh, after the lawsuit, they had to change the look. I uh, want they did put out Iceman and they put out the Destroyer Two, um, which is this is a descendant of that um, model that came after the Gibson lawsuit. Anyhow, so. Um, you know, you still have the horn, you still have this, and they have a little tail right here. 
that makes it a little bit different. And if I'm not mistaken, the angle and the amount of this portion right here is probably different than the Gibson Explorer. But um, anyhow, uh, you know, I still love the look of this guitar. Now, this particular design, um, if you go back, uh, um, I want to say Def Leppard, Phil Collin was uh, using this particular guitar, maybe like the days of Pyromania, I, I don't know. And then uh, who's another guy, um, Iron Maiden guy? Adrian Smith, I also believe back in the 80s uh, was using this destroyer, this look of destroyer. Um, I think one Phil Collin used from Def Leppard had also middle pickup. Uh, check me if that's wrong. Um, anyhow, so uh, obviously, you know, the, the specs have changed and whatnot, but <clears throat> I love this particular one because, one, it's very well together for the money. Yes, uh, the MSRP 799 is still a little bit, uh, just a tad more than what I would like to spend on a China-made guitar. However, um, you know, as it you know, economics dictate and as, you know, the, the value of dollars change against Chinese month currency. You know, you, you have to draw the line somewhere, you know, where you're, you're buying something and you are happy with what you're spending for what you're getting, then, you know, it's fine. You just need to make peace with yourself. Um, I did not pay $7.99. I did pay slightly less. Uh, so I was able to make peace with it. But um, the basically, the look, the the build quality, um, the s general spec of it uh, was enough to convince me that this was a solid invest. Well, I, I'm, I didn't buy as investment. Obviously, it's not going to gain any value all, uh, as uh, years come by. But it was a you know a reasonable amount of money that I w didn't mind spending um, acquiring this guitar. Again, me being an explorer whore certainly did not help. Um, the pickup combination. Oh, just, just good stuff. I just, oh, I forget which guitar of mine, another guitar of mine, have that combination. But uh, Tone Zone, Air Norton, um, generally DiMarzio pickups. I, you know, I'm not a professional musician or engineer or any any of that nature. So it sounds a little funny when I talk about different nuisance of pickups, but. The DiMarzio pickups, like the uh, Aaron Norton Tone Zone, whatnot, always feel a little bit more organic to me. Um, they're a little bit more rounded off. There is no harsh uh, edge, um, so I, I, I really tend to love uh, you know DiMarzio pickups that give you a little bit more classic vibe, a little more vintagey vibe. Something that is a little bit more versatile, not like a one-trick pony. So I love this combination. And um, if you notice, the guitar has Ivan as a proprietary bridge. And then the knobs have little, I don't, I don't know what these are called, but basically they give you the um, added traction for holding on to the the you know, each knob to go back and forth on. So anyhow, um, that's kind of what, what this guitar is. Um, the, the feel of the guitar is very familiar. Um, it does not have the razor thin neck that like the RG series from Ibanez has. This has a little bit more girth to hold on to. Although, like a traditional list may find the neck still missing um, chunk that they want to like hold on to. Me, I, I have a very weak and small hand, so um, you know, thinner is better for me to play on. But anyhow, so that's what it is. The fret, um, the fret wire job, uh, you know, very nicely uh, round, rounded off, nothing um, sticking out, nothing sharp, very evenly done. Um, out of the box, the action was good. Now, I don't know whether that's because um, Ibanez did a good job out of the factory or because I bought this guitar from Sweetwater and if they did a, um, you know, the inspection before they ship each guitar out and they, um, maybe they set up the uh, action at that time, but um, absolutely zero buzzing, nothing of that nature. 
everything is evenly spaced out, you know, like neck joint at a proper angle being set into the body, you know, all that good stuff. So, um, you know, for, for the money, yes, I, I, I think the MSRP is a little bit high than where it should be, but the build quality and whatever, absolutely superb. Uh, the tuners do leave room for improvement. Um, I did notice they're a little bit, what's the word? They, they are a little bit grabby and sticky. So what happens is I would tune and it won't, even though I'm, obviously you're not like doing this, you're making gradual change but as I'm trying to tune, trying to tune, try to tune and I turn it, it, it wouldn't move. The, the needle wouldn't move and then all of a sudden it engages and then it goes. Um, you every now and then see something like that even on expensive tuners but um, ju it's just a bit more exaggerated on these tuners. Um, you know they, they're not anything special. I'm sure these are either in-house develop the tuners or just some, you know, they have to cut costs somewhere, right? So I'm sure that's where they uh, save some money by uh, deploying less than desirable tuners. Now, once they engage and, you know, set to proper pitch, they do a pretty decent job staying there. But now if I leave the guitar unattended for a couple months or whatever, even though inside of a case or inside of a gig bag, I did notice that they will come out of tune a bit and then you have to go through that exercise and then uh, you have to watch out for the gears to just engage and start uh, changing pitch at that point. So that's just one minor gripe. Other than that, it's all good. I think um, now a little bit of background. I've, lately, last one year or so, I've been unloading a lot of my... Um, play guitars, uh, play guitars as in like something less than $1,000. Um, so I'll, I'll sell this, I'll sell that, and put together that money for something else. This I think um, is going to be a keeper because, um, you know, I love the tone, I love the way it plays, and I'm an explorer whore. Like I said, I think this might be a video that the word whore appears the most number of times. I'm trying to keep, the, I, I, I do try to keep my channel I don't know what would rated R. Although every time, every now and then, I I will cuss up a storm like a uh, sailor, but that's neither here nor there, is it? Anyhow, so that will wrap this video for the Ibanez Destroyer. Um, again, those of you who tuned in for a professional review, you ain't gonna get that on this channel. This is I never call my videos review videos because I'm not qualified. Um, this is just a friendly chat between me and you, a couple of friends sitting down together and sharing a beer, and just me rambling on about particular instruments. So this has been another episode of a Guitar Chat. Um, been trying to put out more because uh, I got shit ton and fuck ton of more uh, gear that I've acquired, which I haven't made videos on. So. Uh, I will come back. Next video may not be guitar related, so um, those of you who tune in to watch guitar gear stuff, um, you know, don't don't fret. I will, I will come back. And Nam is just around the corner as well, so there will be some more stuff coming up. Anyhow, that's it for this episode. Until next time, you guys all take care.